Thank you for tuning in to Cop with Comic. I'm Brian Cop, and we're with Comic Art Kai. Art Kai, how the hell are you? I'm good, man. How are you, Brian? Oh, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for coming on and let people know where they can find you doing stand-up comedy online. I know I follow you on Instagram and Twitter. You're Fart Kai. C-A-S. Yes. <laughs> yes. F-A-R-T and then Kai spelled uh, C-A-I. I love um, that. If you're a comic, you have to do Fart Kai. You can't just do Art Kai. <laughs> no. I mean, it's it's it was sort of like a, a, what's the word, a reappropriation of, of what I was called when I was a youngin'. <laughs> You took it back. You have the power now. Right. But I'm not sure if, like, people who, uh, when I was a kid, like, called me that, like, see my social media now, and they're like, wow, this kid is still lame. You know, I don't know <laughs> if there's still a perception there. But uh, <laughs> it's it's. I find it entertaining to me. And that's all that matters in the end, right? Yeah, that, that's all that matters. Like, if you can't make the other stand-up comics at the open mic laugh, just make yourself <laughs> laugh first. And right. ultimately, ultimately, you'll find comedy that will make a whole stadium full of Art Kai fans laugh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, dream. But right now we're in the first stage of that, which is, uh, <laughs> trying to make other stand-up comics laugh. Which and it's not going great. But uh, yeah. <laughs> especially during the pandemic, are you doing online like Zoom shows or Instagram live shows, or are you going to any of these parks or rooftops? Um, I've done one or two like Zoom things, and I've not done any outdoor stuff yet. Uh, I am sort of trying to avoid both right now. I think I'm more open to, well, okay, I guess to get into it, like the online stuff is just like not for me. Like I just feel it's just not my, not my speed, you know, not like what I like to do. Uh, but I respect it, you know, I, 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 I have more power to anyone who does it and I think it's great. And I just, I just can't personally bring myself to do it. You know, you know that feeling? Um, and the I think some people like, some people have have to. I think I had Caitlin Cook on here, yeah. and I think she said something like, "There's comedians who have gotten so far that they can actually live off of it." And so oh now God, it's yeah. it's those people who have to kind of try to keep keep it going because the one source of income they had is no longer there. Like they're a victim of their own success almost. Yeah, totally. And uh, the one show that I did, uh, I I got paid like. 25 bucks and i was like oh my god this like pays better than most like live show yeah. you know what i'm saying like, yeah, Ke- kelly, like- Ke- Ke- kelly taylor said that too i'm just amazed it's so great especially when you take into account things like you know commutes the fact that you don't have to hop on a two uh three dollar train or whatever to get to the place and or six you know five bucks round trip oh yeah totally and I think people are like online when they're like at home and they just see like a donate button or whatever. They're just more inclined to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to click this button and then hit like five bucks and we're going to send it through. And uh, yeah, I think they also see it as like charity. So like, <laughs> here's this more. guy who's trying to tell jokes online. Like this guy deserves my five dollars. Let me tell you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Like when I online shop, like I'm, I'm so, so much more inclined to, to just throw. Oh, all yeah. Around. Yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah, what's money when it's digital? And so, yeah, yeah one thing really. we're going to talk, yeah, what, I'm kind of interested in things like, you know, you, you supplied some topics, which I have all our guests do, and, and many of them were interesting in your case, and comedy origins. <laughs> yeah, comedy origin stories were one of them. So first of all, like, your comedy origin story, and what are some of the comedy origin stories of stand-up you look up to that you're like, ah, that's a good story, too? Oh, man. Uh, I guess, yeah, starting with me, I, I basically just have always been interested in comedy i think growing i grew up in nebraska and there was not a lot of there's no, really no comedy scene there and um i don't know i just like always ended up at like the wikipedia pages of like comedians like it was always like uh you know the snl people like it was a like, tina fey era so like i'd always like end up on her like wikipedia page and like read up on like second city and stuff and i was like a huge fan of like Dimitri martin and like Stephen Wright and kind of the one-liner comedians and just like looking into them being like who are these like what is this job like what is it and, like i think <laughs> Yeah, just going through growing up like that way and just being like hyper interested in it, but not really knowing that it's like a thing that you could do, kind of just a thing you can consume, you know? I yeah, just, like, when did, when did, yeah, when did you realize that it was something you could actually do? Yeah, so I actually took a uh, women in stand-up comedy class in college when uh, I was like, oh my God, like this is, so we like basically just watched a lot of stand-up and did some improv and like watched uh, a lot of like comedy in general. And so that. Uh, yeah, our final was to do was like a 10 minute stand up set. 
for this class, and that ba that basically started the whole journey. And I, I why is I it called moved. why was yeah why is it called women in comedy? It looks like you are on your Twitter bio. It says proud stepson. And <laughs> Uh, wait no on your website it also uses the pronoun uh, male pronouns why were you in a women in women in stand-up is it because you're like well this is just an excuse to do comedy it's not necessarily for women performers no yeah so the class was uh they they allowed uh dudes to, to do it <laughs> and um it was mainly women but it was just like i think why, why did we take it? I think there was just like the teacher was really nice. And then like people kind of like the word sort of got out. Like you should take this class with this teacher who's like pretty cool and like funny. And like, it's a cool like comedy class. And it's like, it'll fill, I think it also like I needed an English credit and it was technically an English credit. So I was like, <laughs> oh, perfect. And like me and like five of my friends did it. Yeah. And, uh, and there's, there's, well, there's women there. So if you're into women, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, uh, it, yeah, it was, it was a, a good, a good setup for sure. And, and so you did 10 minutes at the end and how'd you do? I don't remember. So what happened was, <laughs> I was supposed I was slated to go like fourth, and um, one of the one of the comics or comics one of the my classmates <laughs> was like one of the students. Yeah, one of the students trying to avoid an English class. Yeah, no, but they they bumped me. Like he <gasps> like she was like yeah she was like hey like I don't want to go last. Can I go in your spot? And I was just like. Being the pushover that I am, I was like, "Oh, dude, of course, like absolutely, like that's that's cool, like I can go last, like that's not a big deal." And so yeah. I went, I went dead last. The teacher, uh, it was like a class of like 20, 25 kids, and so like it was a long uh, show essentially. And yeah, the the teacher eventually was like, "All right, uh, looks like everyone went," and she completely <laughs> forgot about me. Oh. And then someone in the class was like, actually, you forgot art. And I was like, oh, you're like, God. motherfucker, I could have had I, an easy A. Man. I know, but right. I love that. Because so, if not for that person in your class, you might not have ended up in New York, New York City stand-up comic. Right. And so I, uh, yeah, she like called me up and I did it. And I don't really remember if I did well. I think people were pretty burnt out at that point. Because, again, 20 people, 10 minutes sets each, like, that's a yeah. long show, you know. Twenty people, ten minutes. That's that's crazy. The teacher yeah. should have divided it up into a couple days, I would think. Oh yeah. So the issue was, I don't think the teacher was like a huge comedy fan or really knew comedy. Uh, <laughs> or a comedy booker, I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not definitely not a comedy booker. <laughs> uh, more of a PhD. Um, so it, it, yeah, it was it was not a well run class at all, but it was fun and I made a lot of good friends from it and it was a uh, it was cool. It was also like it had like a nice uh, like feminist bend to it but it was like subtle because like all like through comedy not like let's look at all of, like women's history you know it's just like let's look at silver sarah silverman's bits or like phil stiller's yeah. bits you know and it's just like oh this is like a really cool way to like access all this like really important historical stuff you know that's so funny because sarah silverman's bits are you know the fact that they are a topic of study which shocks sarah silverman herself i would think oh yeah <laughs> It's like totally. kids are learning this shit in Nebraska. And like speaking of Nebraska, like your family upbringing was one of the topics. Like, you know, what about living in Nebraska or about your family are you talking about on stage? Yeah, so I think a lot of it. I think that's where uh, I kind of derive my like 10-ish minutes or so. It's like that. It's like basically the core where uh, and I think this is a lot of. Be and I, I definitely because of like going to therapy and just like talking a lot about my family it's just like constantly on my mind and so I'm like all right mom and dad what's what's up um so yeah I guess to answer your question like they're very different people and they're immigrants and um I think their their experience is not maybe not like super unique but I think that um there's like subtleties that I'm like trying to like get into like for example my mom like opened one of the first Thai restaurants in Omaha and wow. I, I worked there when I was like 13, <laughs> you know, classic. And like, yeah. And I think there's just a lot of like nuance of like certain kinds of people that would come in and just like the things that I have to do. And like, like, for example, when I was too young to work there and I had to like stay with my mom, she would like literally put me in like the storage closet to like do homework <laughs> and like hang out and like because the, the restaurant would get busy and there would be no space for uh, me, you know, so it's like things that's, like that. That's when that's before you had kind of a worker's permit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Before I started to, uh, you know, get uh, paid under the table, and uh, <laughs> I looked old enough to work, 
I think. It, Unless it'll work as permit. Yeah, I also started working, I think, when I was maybe like 14 or something, and I was dog shit at it. But, um, yeah, what, what are some of the things that you think, um, you know, working young can kind of, um, does it instill any sort of work ethic that that is carried over to not only being a comedian who hustles in New York City, but also a comedian who's trying to do so th- throughout quarantine? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think you, you just touched, touched right upon it. I mean, just like the idea of like, what, what would you work in? I was in ice cream. I couldn't even make an ice cream cone. Yeah, it was, it was uh, dumb. But then I think, you know, after after that, I had several other jobs, like music store, pet store, that I was pretty good at. Right. So you you understand, like, the, the service industry, where it's very much like you got to, like, run around and make sure people are taken care of, right? Like, you, yeah. uh, that's, that's basically, I think that carries over a lot, I think, with, like, the quote-unquote New York City hustle, you know? Or just, like, I got to, like, do and run this, like, run over to this, like, mic or, like, the show and, like, do this thing here and then, like, just, like, continually running around and it doesn't feel like i think you grow like a numbness to it when you work in the service industry you're kind of like just used to like doing that because it's just like what you do you know <laughs> this is just what we're paid to do and so now you're doing it for free but you're doing it out of love though and yes. that can that can kind of make the whole thing worth it right uh out yeah, of the love, love the love of the game is it, the love of the game pays better than minimum wage Right, totally, yeah. and uh, honestly, trumps the love for my mother. Uh, so yeah, it all works out. No, I, yeah, I love my mom a lot. So. Yeah, what about the parents? Like, I, I had Leonardo, Leonardo Joni on here, and she said something like, "Her parents, because they came, I thought they came from Slovenia." Um, they said that, you know, once you move to America, your culture is almost frozen in time. So while your home country, Slovenia or whatever, kept kind of progressing. You know, because it was not a static thing. It was a dynamic that continued to evolve. The minute you move to America, those immigrants' parents, they still keep that same value as oh, if. Oh, totally. Yeah, so, like, if they moved in 1987, they're keeping Slovenian values from 1987, not Slovenian values from 2020. Oh, yeah. I mean, my dad basically left because of the Cultural Revolution that was happening in China. And uh, he is, like, pretty anti-China still. And it, it's, it's huh. so interesting to see because I think he has this, like in his mind, this like neo post, uh, post cultural revolution sort of like mentality of like, okay, we need to like preserve like academics and like, uh, creativity and like all this like stuff that, you know, Mao was like pretty against, you know, but like now it's like, if you go back to China and he's talked about this where it's like, oh, it's so different. Like everything's like technologically advanced. Like we're, we're everyone's like, uh, pro innovation in China. Cause like, you know, that's where the economy grows. Uh-huh. And so, He's 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 clearly less anti-China now. But like growing up, it was always like compl- there's always some sort of like news headline that he would bring up and just complain about. You know, like this is classic <laughs> China. This is like Mao's China. You know. But that, but that's and, so cool. The fact that he was kind of anti that meant that if Mao was anti-creativity, your dad was pro-creativity, and and so a, a career in the arts like stand-up comedy is totally fine for Archie, right? Yeah, uh, well, I, I, he doesn't really get the uh, the extent of uh, of comedy. He, he kind of sees it as a hobby right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't think he sees creativity or a creative pursuit as a financially viable <laughs> pursuit, which is it's fair, you know. Yeah, I, oh, sure. I, so, I, so an immigrant parent also cares that you're going to be able to survive on your own. Yeah, totally. And I think he especially, um, I think, does have like an industrial like Maoist. Uh, mentality where it's like you you have to work like there there are things you have to do like you can't escape these these sort of ideals that I think he was kind of gr- grew up with yeah. um yeah, like, dad, which I, is dad, I am I'm, I am working I went to you know three mics today man <laughs> yeah uh, I went to yeah, 25, 25 mics dad that's pretty difficult that's what I want to tell him but <laughs> it's more like yeah I went to work and uh I didn't do anything there but I got paid <laughs> so it's it's, it's, some of the other topics that I love are um, you have cute things on here and you have Japan. <laughs> yeah, you have Japan, which seems to be the the kind of epicenter of cute. And so the fact yeah. that you have a Chinese, you know, you were raised by Chinese parents and you're Chinese American, I take it. Um, what, you know, kind of how can you kind of um, how, how does that jive or or whatever with Japanese cute things like how you know do you call your you know are you a Chinese person if you love Japanese cute things or aren't there aren't there Chinese cute things that you can love (laughs) yeah no I it basically so I've been okay I guess to backtrack and explain why I chose this topic um I've been consuming a lot of anime recently and I think because of quarantine and whatnot there's like not much to do and like I'm sort of reverting back to like how I was in high school and I consumed a lot of anime in high school. And so it's it's been interesting to, like, 
tap back into like what's going on in like Japanese culture and yeah. things. I don't know what it is, but um, growing up, I think Asian American and just like really gravitating towards anime like on Cartoon Network, like that is kind of what slowed up like my interest in it. And um, I just found that like the the cartoons to be like far more interesting and like uh, crazy than American cartoons, which is true. If you watch like an anime, they're like it's all like insane. Um, in terms of plot and whatnot. And I think there's just, they're just very good at, uh, the Japanese are very good at like, in their design to keep things like very simple and um, like have vibrant colors. And I think they like ex accentuate like things correctly. And I think if they tap into like something like cuteness, it, they do it in a really uh, professional and like exuberant way where it's just like, oh, this is like super cute. Yeah. Right. So, um, and 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 what you just said though, anime sounds like there's some simplicity there, but it can be batshit crazy in terms of plot. Like, is there anything on stage that you can do to recreate that experience for an audience? Yeah, I don't know. I it's hard to say because, like, again, like I I kind of fell off the anime bandwagon when I like went to college and like started, I guess, in high school too. So it's been like it's been a couple of years. Uh, but there is like this, like all anime is weirdly like quirky in a way and yeah. uh there's just a lot of like nonsensical dialogue and like just really strange like visual things and um i definitely think they like try to like insert like the real like the super silly uh just like i guess quote unquote quirky i don't like that term but i mean that's sort of what i sort of gravitate towards uh yeah, even even yeah. mentioning even even mentioning anime at the beginning of your set could condition someone to expect things that are a little silly or twisty or colorful. Like it would give you a license yeah. to just kind of be a little crazy. And, and, and if they ever didn't get it, you'd be like, "That's the anime influence." You know, <laughs> that could be your yeah. rescue. Like if they don't laugh at it, be like, "See, that's anime. That was a plot twist." You know, you guys not laughing was a big old plot twist. Right. And <laughs> I've tried I've tried like bits that were like anime centric, but I, it's hard because I don't think anyone like not everyone's like familiar with it or like the details of anime um and so i don't know, like, if, I don't know like, if, yeah i don't know if i don't even know if they'd have to be though like the minute yeah, you say sure. i'm a fan of anime just be like you know my set won't be about anime but it's going to be batshit crazy and that yeah. would be enough to be like oh shit this guy is just fucking off the deep end like <laughs> this, this this steven right that you used to watch back in nebraska yeah totally and um yeah speaking of origin stories going back to that steven Wright has a great origin story yeah what's uh, it? yeah so he used to do comedy uh he started in boston like during the 80s in the comedy boom and um his like big break i think was on carson and um he was performing at like a showcase in a chinese restaurant where uh, it's called the ding ho lounge i think and there's a great documentary about this but like the boston comedy scene during then but he they had a showcase and one of the uh talent scouts went to the showcase and Stephen Wright was just like he did a set, and he felt like he was so like too different from everyone else, and uh, didn't get the part, you know, didn't get Carson, and so he like left early after his set. And but the talent scout liked him so much, he like asked everyone like, "Hey, where does this Stephen guy go?" And <laughs> the guy was like, "Oh, he like here's his number." And so the talent scout called up Stephen, was like, "Hey, like." we loved you, like, you should come on Carson. And so he went on Carson and uh, obviously killed and just became huge, you know? Uh, and so is that that kind of something you can aspire to, to have such a, a unique a unique set that even if you don't jive with other people on the bill, there's going to be yeah. somebody in the audience who kind of is like, who the fuck is that? Let me look him up on Wikipedia, just like uh, Arkai did with Tina Fey. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I think the, the attitude of just, like, just not expecting you know the outcome of anything you know and yeah. that's very healthy because he, he like expected not to get it and so like what if the town scout was like you know what he's not here he doesn't get it you know like it, <laughs> it's nice that the town scout was like oh i liked him a lot i want to hit him up you know yeah. but i feel like that's unlikely when most yeah. people are like oh he's not here then i guess we'll go to the second good like best guy you oh know? sure and even even certain comics have been like there's been bookers who've said that if you don't have your first and last name as your social handle, <laughs> you're somehow not going to be on the show. Meaning, like, they're prioritizing things other than, you know, comedy voice and hilarity. Yeah. 
And so, I mean, as long yeah. as you focus and focus on the right thing, you're going to draw the right audiences to you, even if it means you know, you're passing up on certain professional, quote unquote, professional opportunities. Like what kind of show would that right. be full of people who showed up? <laughs> I mean, people who show up on time, people who have their first and last name as their social handle. No, I'd rather have fart guy in my show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? I, I, yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly it. Kind of just doing your own thing. Just, uh, yeah, no, I think, you know, be anything. Just kind of like having a Zen mindset to it all. I think, I think that story of like Stephen Wright, he should have just like chilled out and like, you know, luckily the scout was nice and called him up, but he could have easily just missed out on it. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. I mean, we're not going to miss out on Art Kai because I follow him on Twitter and Instagram, Fart Kai. His, uh, his website is Art Kai Stuff, and of course, the last name is spelled C-A-I, as if there was any other way to pronounce that <laughs> last name. <laughs> Your dad in Nebraska would be super proud, I would think. Fart Kai. Like, yeah. My son is Fart, Fart Kai. Kai. Haven't you heard of him? Oh, yeah. And my dad's definitely like the type of Asian dad who will just, you know, fart in public uh, unabashedly. <laughs> just let things rip and uh let, let things stink up and yeah, that was like, the there's, main there's no, no existence yeah. for a long time yeah there, well at least a good comedy but also there's no mao around <laughs> to tell him he can't fart he's gonna he's like this is america <laughs> that's why i came yeah there's no there's no think police trying to trying to stop him from from tooting and that's what, great that's america baby <laughs> And one other one other small topic that i can talk about in one second if you have if you had your own cult you would of course be its leader um <laughs> What would the cult, what would be kind of the organizing principle of the cult? Would it be around, okay, let the, you know, you know, let's have a lot of sex and procreate like, <laughs> procreate like mad, just like the women, the women uh, stand-up class you took? Or would, it be, or would it be like, we have to be super, we have to, you know, have nothing but cute things and Japanese cute things and anime and things like that? Yeah, ooh, that's a good, that's a good question. Uh, well, I guess if i were a cult leader which i don't want to be i want to be very clear it's, it sounds very stressful and that's the only reason why i don't want to do it it's too much stress uh, i don't know i've been thinking about this a lot like i wish that all my friends like had a creative thing that they did i think it'd be cool to like have a cult that like everyone had like a creative outlet and like they can just like bring in creative stuff they do and just like everyone just shares and like has a good time like showing like oh this is a painting i did or like hey this is like a cool uh podcast that i did and yeah. uh, my name is Brian Coppett, and I just brought in this <laughs> podcast, and I, I want, I'm like, I want to show it off. I'm, I'll be like, as a cult leader, I'd be like, yo, Brian, this is great. Let's keep yeah, doing let's, it. You know? Yeah, let's, let's put you on. And it's almost like that's what you're doing with uh, the show you host, Off Menu Comedy Show. I see people on there, former guests like Paige Smith Hogan. I see Chinook to Sarah Salazar. I see all these yeah. great comics. Are you booking that, or are you just hosting that? I used to book and host it. Uh, it's no longer a thing, unfortunately. Is that on my website? I got to change that. I think it was on, um, on your. I think it was on Fart Kai on Instagram. Just the, just the previous show posters. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, it used to be it used to be a show that I did uh, a lot of fun in Brooklyn. Um, the venue didn't really work out, and so I haven't really done it in a while. And obviously the pandemic happened. So, uh, but yeah, I, I I used to run that show, and it was a good time. And so you haven't been doing it during quarantine. No, I've not. Um, yeah, as, as again, you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Virtual comedy is not for Art Kai. It's, it really isn't. I wish it were. There's, a, there's like a huge problem. It's like, I wish I could love it. In the same way, like, I wish I could be religious, you know, but I just can't. I just can't bring myself to do it. Well, really, you need to see him in the room because he's like an anime act come to life. He's far. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, Art Kai. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I did want to break Mike Kaplan's record of having the longest episode, but I don't think that's going to happen today. <laughs> Well, you, when you get a big, when, you, when you get a, you know, when you get him a big name like that, you know, you kind of, <laughs> he's like, well, I need this much money, and like, well, if you if you need that much money, and you're totally worth it, Mike Kaplan, because you're a genius, but you're yeah. gonna go, you're gonna go longer. Right. Well, hey, I'll do, I'll do two hours for free. I just want to know that. <laughs> well, we can't wait to have you back on. Hopefully, when we're in in, in person at QED Astoria. Yeah, I would love, to, I would love to meet you one day. I think it'd be, it'd be chill. Dude, well, now, now that I know all these comics and on your sweet shows, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, dude. After quarantine is done, I'm gonna go to every comedy show in the history. Of comedy. <laughs> if you believe me, I mean, I'm ready to hang with all y'all. I'm ready to you, you and Chinook, and yeah. Paige Smith Hogan, and all the former guests. I just love them all. Yo, I that that that's all I want is, yeah. is to hang with comics. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. I'm I'm back in the high school me, and I don't like it. You know. <laughs> Dude, people from high school are like this fart guy. This fart guy is super lame, man. Yeah, he's like, dude, he hasn't changed at all. He's back, to, <laughs> he's back to fart guy. Dude, yeah, Art Kai, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one.